no scratches in here. And I know that Neil from United Way Toronto, representing United Way today, had mentioned that he is going to try and compete in this race. And I do see Neil down there. He's number 10. So doesn't look like available for wagering, but available for uh, bragging rights if he can get up for a win. And it looks like we've got Leroy here. And Leroy, Natalie, going to go with a different routine. No footwear. No, I think that's pretty usual for you. It's pretty usual. Why, why no shoes? Well, it uh, makes you run better because the grass is soft, so it gives you a more firm grip. All right, and how confident are you feeling in this race today? Uh, uh, it's my first time against younger horses, so I think uh, I'll do my best. Uh, well, I'd, I don't want to say we're going to wish you luck because it would be nice to see another winner, but I guess good luck. Well, as I'm the favorite, then I'll try to do my best. All right, and good luck to everybody in this race. It should be an interesting race, Chad. We'll see how that turns out. Yes, and uh, Leroy looking to get a big win here should probably go off as, uh, as one of the big favorites. Uh, four to five installs the morning line choice. But if you'd like anyone else in this race, it looks like you're getting great odds. I mean, we'll have to wait and see uh, what the updated odds will be once wagering gets uh, factored in here, but everybody looks to be loose and ready to go. And and uh, I see Anil. Anil just he just uh, acknowledged me. He's getting ready to go. He's loose. Anil, you feel good? All right. He, he feels good. He's ready to go. But uh, we can't bet on him. We can't bet on Anil. Looks like he's not in on the wager. And he was a late entry. And the gate crew here, quickly, not wasting any time. They're getting everybody situated in their right positions. We're going to be ready to go. And I can see Leroy already right up to the edge of the gate. He is raring to get out of there. We've got a couple more left to load in the gate. Another 100-meter sprint. And Dan, do you maybe uh, want to take a chance at perhaps picking a winner here? A 5-6, five, 6-5 six, six, five exactor, Chad. The uh, Father Henry Carr uh, students are uh, look like they're primed and, and ready for action. And uh, this is the Cigar Men's. 100 meters. Uh, again, that equipment change on Leroy Myrie. He's not wearing any shoes. No shoes on the four. Leroy Myrie. They're under starter Sandy Holly's orders. They're at the post. They're off. Leroy Myrie. And there goes uh, Shane Domage and Matthew Gentles. And Shane Domage making a mockery of this. Look at this. He looks like Ben Johnson out there. He wins by about 10 yards over a uh, fellow Henry Carr. Uh, Matthew uh, Gentles. Uh, then we had a Richard Chong. But blowing them away here was Shane Domage. And I had the exactor, Chad. So 6-5. So Danny was right on to something there with the father car again. Coming here this year to Woodbine for the 11th edition of the United Way Toronto Turf Races. And dominating so far. Exactor in the last race. Exactor here. 8-1 to one on both of these contestants. We've got prices in for race number two. We'll pass those along before we get some post-race reaction. And here we go. We've got, all right, well, we've got a win on Stephanie, 1540 and 210 to place. The four, who's that heavy favorite. Look at these fluctuation of odds. Looks like a 210 to place and $3 to show. And then Laura Breda finishing in third. So 347 gone official in that second race. Jeff catching up with our top two. And there it is again, Jeff. Father Henry Carr dominating. Wow, man, you guys are fast. When I was in high school, I just wanted to get to the cafeteria. I didn't think about anything when it comes to track and field, but you guys really smoked them today. Shane and Matthew, the top two finishers. First of all, it's you, Shane. Are you a track star in school right now? Well, I'm trying to work on it more, but I want to get faster. Have you ever run on grass before and out of a horse starting gate? No, it's my first <laughs> time. <laughs> well, it's great to have you with us. Do you, guys, you guys must have a great track team there. Yeah, um, we have a pretty good team still. Yeah, I guess and so. <laughs> Congratulations, man. Let's now bring in the second place finisher, and this is Matthew. Matthew, did you know this guy was going to be tough competition today? Yeah. What, just take us through your thoughts of, of the race, because Leroy's our defending champion. He was right beside you there with no shoes. Uh, uh, just take us through the running of the race. Uh, I've never been on grass or through the gates before. My friend Shane... He came from a different school, and he really admired me to run faster. So a couple of years now, both of us will be going head-to-head. -head. All righty. Keep it up, guys. Uh, you're off to a promising start in your careers, and uh, hopefully we'll see you back here next year. Yeah. All righty. There you go, the top two finishers from our 100-meter event, the Cigar Men's Division. Now we're going to talk about some 
relay. So we'll get it back to Chad and Nats. Okay, Jeff, we'll get to those relays in just a moment because we start that in race number four, and that'll wrap up the day with four, five, and six. But, Natalie, we had an incident right at the early stages of this sprint with the heavy favorite looking like Leroy causing some interference. Now, you were able to talk to the man that went down the spill. Steve, what did he say? He just said he missed a foot, took one face, face dive right into the turf. He said it's a soft turf course, though. So. Soft turf course. Okay, so we'll have to consider that. But uh, these Father Henry Carr... Uh, competitors are just dominating so far. We'll have to watch for them coming up, uh, especially in race number six with that uh, relay race. Yeah, I think the odds makers might want to get looking at their books again and rework those odds a little bit. Otherwise, some people are going to be making some major money because I would not steer away from putting my money on them. Now, when you competed in the relay, what role did you play? I broke from the gate. Oh, you were the starter, right? Eh? Yes, okay. I started. It, it's, Why is that? I don't know. I think they just wanted to get me out of the way. I'm not going to lie because I was definitely... <laughs> The slower leg of the four leg, four length relay race. Uh, it's tough. Do, it's tough. Do, do you think uh, your team? Because we're going to have your defending team back in, or at least uh, parts of it. Uh, Paul Swambeg and also uh, Matt Taylor in there with a couple of newcomers who I hear are maybe some ringers. Perhaps of that what you've heard. I don't know. I've heard they're pretty tough. I think they're going to be the team to beat. I mean, they have to defend the red ribbon. Well, and we've got a route. Definitely for our broadcast department, right? Yeah. Oh, definitely. There's no, no, no doubt about it. We're, I'm rooting for broadcast. Now look at this. So we had the morning line odds. We're eight to one on Shane and Natalie. Safe to say, Shane took the most betting support. Yeah, uh, definitely. I think someone took some uh, a hint from the first race when the I ladies so. when the ladies just smoke right past. Two ten across the board, and then Matthew, who was second, also from Father Henry Carr, three twenty and two ten. And then Leroy just got the head down in the bob to finish in the top three, but uh, will not come out with a victory here. Shane was fast, certainly fast in that race. And now we're going to have to watch it here. I'm not sure if any of these individuals are coming back to compete later on in, in uh, any of these relays, but uh, I think the gate will have to be moved as we'll have uh, relay four teams, 100 meters each, and we'll 